Hello, and welcome to Star Trek Zone, the show where we explore everything about the Star Trek universe. In this episode, we're going to dive deep into two of the most iconic Starship classes of the 24th century, the Galaxy Class and the Nebula Class. The Galaxy Class and the Nebula Class were developed in parallel in the 2340s and 2350s as part of Starfleet's new generation of exploration vessels one. They share many structural components and systems, such as the saucer-shaped primary hull, the warp nacelles, the deflector dish, and the phaser arrays too. However, they also have some significant differences that make the- Before continue, I request you to subscribe our channel and press on the bell icon button for new videos notifications on time, them suited for different mission profiles. The Galaxy class is the flagship of Starfleet, measuring 642 meters in length and 463 meters in width 3. It has 42 decks and a crew complement of over 1-3. The Galaxy class is designed to be a self-contained city in space, capable of operating independently for extended periods of time too. It has a large secondary hull that houses the main engineering section, the shuttle bays, and various cargo bays too. The Galaxy class also has a unique feature that allows it to separate its saucer section from its stardrive section in case of emergency or tactical advantage too. The saucer section can sustain warp speed for a short time using its own impulse engines, while the Stardrive section can engage in combat or perform other maneuvers using its warp nacelles too. The Nebula class is a more compact and versatile design, measuring 442 meters in length and 318 meters in width 3. It has 33 decks and a crew complement of 7503. The Nebula class is designed to be a multi-mission platform that can be easily customized for different scenarios too. It has a smaller secondary hull that is attached directly to the underside of the saucer section, saving some space and materials too. The Nebula class also has a distinctive feature that sets it apart from other starships. A large pylon on top of the saucer section that supports a triangular mission pod too. The mission pod can be swapped out with different modules depending on the needs of the mission too. There are four known types of pods, a sensor pod that enhances the ship's scanning capabilities, a weapons pod that adds more phaser emitters and torpedo launchers, a hybrid pod that combines both sensors and weapons, and a warp pod that adds an extra warp engine for increased speed and power too. Both classes have proven themselves to be reliable and effective starships in various situations. They have participated in many important events in Star Trek history, such as the Battle of Wolf 359, the Battle of Sector 001, and the Dominion War 4. They have also been involved in many scientific discoveries and diplomatic missions throughout the Galaxy 4. In this video, we're going to show you some of the secrets and features of these amazing starships. We're going to take you inside their bridges, engineering sections, science labs, crew quarters, shuttle bays, and more. We're going to explain how their systems work, how they are maintained, how they are operated, and how they are upgraded. We're going to compare their strengths and weaknesses, their advantages and disadvantages, their similarities and differences. We're going to give you the ultimate guide for Star Trek fans who love these starships. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this journey into the Galaxy Class and Nebula Class starships. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more Star Trek Zone. Thanks for watching and live long and prosper.